Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj. Ndate is spelled N-D-A-T-E and the E has an accent, a goo on it. Yala is L-Y-A-L-L-A. Mbuj is M-B-O-D-J. Queen Ndata Yala Mbuj. And this class is going to last only 15 minutes today at most. My brother and my sister, today we're talking about Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj. And a story is going to blow you away. Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj was born circa 1810. 1810. 90 years before Ya Asantua started the war of the Golden Stool. 90 years before Ya Asantua was captured and taken all the way to the island of Seychelles. My brother, my sister, today we're talking about this great black woman, Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj. Queen Ndate was born circa 1810. Circa simply means just around, not very specific. And she lived for 50 solid years. And within the 50 years, she had a lot. Now I'm going to tell you some things that will blow your mind. She was a smoking queen. She smoked a lot of herbs. Many people believe that she also smoked Chukuru. What is Chukuru? Ntampe. We. So in the history of Senegal, better still Senegambia, a lot of people refer to her as the Chukuru smoking queen of Senegambia. My brother, my sister, today we're talking about Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj. My producer is going to post a photograph of this great black woman smoking Chukuru. Oh my God. I see so many people write the African history Yabo. class. Yabo. Your names will be mentioned before the end of the class. Let's get into this first. Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj was born circa 1810. And she was born in Senegambia. Yes. She was the first great and the last great queen of Walu. W A L O. Walu. And when we talk about Walu, what are we talking about? Walu was a kingdom on the lower Senegal River in West Africa. In what we now call Senegal and Mauritania. It included parts of the valley and some other such areas around the north and the south, extending to the Atlantic Ocean. To the north were Moorish Emirates, and to the south was the kingdom of Cabo. Oh my God. Now the Walu Empire was a very powerful empire located between Mauritania and Senegal. And this was the queen who served as the last most powerful queen of the Walu Empire. And the Walu Empire also represented one of the four Jolof kingdoms. Jolof, yes. J-O-L-O-F. Jolof. Some people would also refer to it as the Wolof. My brother, my sister, this was a very powerful empire located between Mauritania and, of course, Senegal. It was called the Walu. Walu Empire. Very powerful empire. Now, the empire was so powerful because it was just the, around the Atlantic Ocean. It provided easy access to almost everything that human beings needed. Access to fish. Access to timber. Access to almost everything that all human beings wanted. And at the same time, he had very, very formidable, natural protective um, 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 measures around it. My brother, my sister. Now, the other thing about the Walu Empire was that it had a lot of wonderful lands that were very, very fertile. 
for agricultural activities and also for the rearing of animals. As for fish, all kinds of fish were found just around the uh, Walu Empire, just at the foot of uh, the Atlantic Ocean. So it made it a very, very powerful source of uh, um, food. <laughs> Today we're talking about Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj of Sinigambia, better still of the Walu Empire. Now why would we talk about this woman today? Listen to this. Now, there was a serious invasion going on by the French. The French went all the way to that area. Having known that the area was so much rich in gold, in fish, and so many of those qualities that I mentioned earlier, students. So the French decided to go there. Now, during her reign, she fought against the French colonization and the Moorish invasion of her kingdom. Now, the Moors were a very powerful people who went all the way to Spain, invaded Spain and colonized Spain. Did you ever hear this in any of your history classes? The Moors, and we spell that as M O R S. That's the plural. Yes, the plural. A one is a Moor. My brother, my sister, the Moors were so powerful. They were a great conquest. But they went all the way to the uh, empire of Walu, better still, the Walu Empire, where our great queen Ndate Yala Mbuj ruled. And they couldn't invade the place because she had everything in place. Early in the morning at dawn, she will sit on a rock smoking her chukuru. Late in the evening, she will sit over there too, smoking from a pipe and looking around the whole area to see what was happening. She was said to have inspirations and also visions from the Most High, the God of the Walu Empire. <laughs> My brother, my sister, she was such a powerful woman and she was born into the royal family. She took over from her own sister. Her own sister was also a powerful queen. But when she took over, everybody realized that power pass power. No two weeks about that. <laughs> Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj, born in 1810, solidified her old territory and made it new. She encouraged technology and encouraged learning. At the same time, she was able to build very natural defense walls around her kingdom to send away all intruders, including the Moors and the French. Now, when the French heard about her, they decided to go down there and attack her and take over the whole kingdom and make it their own kingdom. It was a very rich piece of kingdom. Today, we're talking about Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj. And her life is about to get very, very deep. Hey! She was not a puppet of the French people. She was a powerful and not a feeble queen. In fact, a true queen, a true African queen. She was the signatory or co-signatory of many official documents between the Walu and the French. There was nothing the French did on her land without her permission. She was able to keep them away. In fact, she built a solidable, a very formidable army that kept the French away, including the Moors. Her island was so much protected, natural qualities of protection around there. And nobody was able to get into her land without her permission. In 1946, all the way down to the final days of the Walu Empire, she dominated the whole kingdom. And many people wanted to trade with her. They wanted to use trade to be able to infiltrate her land 
And what did she do? If you wanted to trade with her, you would trade on the sea and not in her land. You would meet her on the sea halfway. Then you would ask for whatever you wanted and then the deal will be struck. You would have your goods, she would have her money, and she would return to her kingdom, and you would also return to your kingdom. She had people she put in place of this kind of trade. Nobody was able to infiltrate a kingdom. In fact, the French first took notice of her in 1841 when she was only 30 years old. When she was the widow of the king, Brak Yerim. Brak Yerim. Now, Brak Yerim was a king, and he was the king of the Walu Empire. And Brak is spelled B R A K. Yerim is Y E R I M. King Brak Yerim Mbarik. Yes, Mbanik. M B A N I. CK. So the king's full name was King Brak Yerim Mbanik. Mbanik is spelled M B A N I C K. So our heroine for today was the wife of the king, King Brak Yerim. And when the king died in 1841, she became a widow. And when she became a widow, she took over the throne of the king. Just after her sister had briefly taken over the whole place. Oh my God. And what happened? When she took over the kingdom, the kingdom started to see positive signs of growth. She built a formidable army. Even when the French came in in 1841 and realized that this woman was not an easy woman to deal with, they decided to think twice about how they would be able to use dialogue rather than war. Yes, rather than war to defeat this great black woman. Now, when she met with the French in 1841, she made it clear, you cannot do anything on my land without my permission. Now, the French was only there to study and get to know how they would be able to attack this woman. But she knew it long before. She had a whole kingdom surrounded by soldiers who were so ruthless but loyal to the kingdom of Walu. Now the French decided to listen to her and to do anything she wanted. Mm -mm 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 -mm. She had a son and this son was called Sidia. Now this son was also growing into a very, very powerful son. Hey! very powerful mm, 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 mm. was trained as a soldier and was taught to also go around and learn some of the wonderful histories of the uh, empire of Walu today we're talking about the great queen Ndate Yala Mbuj now the French realized that there was no way they could break her down. They did all they could. Now they only reduced themselves to nothing but traders. But they wanted to use the trade to be able to break her down. Gradually, they were getting to know exactly who she was. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And she knew where the French was there, so she kept them at bay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now along with several other African heroines. She played a crucial role in the struggle for African liberation. Oral historians, also known as griots, that's G-R-I-O-T-S, have recorded a bravery and she remains a symbol of female empowerment. Her army was made up of both males and females and she gave a lot of power to females to be able to take over her kingdom and be there. In fact, the prince of Cairo, remember we talked about the Cairo kingdom, which was at the foot of the Walu kingdom. In fact, they came over for a war, a very big battle, and our queen of the day silenced them in just a few moments. She defeated them 
and kept them at bay, they were never able to come again. A lot of them became subjects to this great black woman. And a lot of them also came down there just to do trade. She kept her land very peaceful until the French realized that she was a big threat to them. The French realized that there was no way they were able to penetrate this land. They realized that if they truly wanted all the goody goodies of uh, the Walu kingdom, then they had to defeat this woman. Now the French decided to make a final call. And when they came over with guns and ammunition, they bombarded the kingdom of Walu. Our heroine remained in there fighting back. A lot of the French went down the drain. They fought and fought and fought for a long time until the French was able to go into the kingdom of Walu. When a lot of the soldiers had run out of ammunition and a lot of them, remember this was almost like an island, it was not easy for you to come in and all the weapons that they used, my brother, my sister, the ammunition that they used, they ran out of a lot of the ammunition. And the French finally were able to come in. And when they came in, they captured our heroine somewhere in 1878. They captured her. And then they took over the whole of the Walu Empire. That was the end of the Walu Empire. The French was not able to contain it. The French misused it and destroyed it. In 1878, they exiled our queen all the way to Gabon another protectorate of the French and that was the end of the empire of Walu, better still the Walu empire and the great queen known as um, Ndate Yala Mbuj but interestingly listen to what happened before 1878 when Yala Mbuj was exiled it was said that nobody knew where she was when she was sent away. Whether she escaped or she ever operated. But the last time anybody ever heard of her was in 1856. 1856. Some other historical sources say 1860. But by 1878, about 18 years after she disappeared or died, the whole Walu kingdom ceased to exist by the courtesy of the French. In fact, when she was captured and sent away her son, remember her son we talked about, Sidia. Sidia fought very hard and protected the kingdom for another 18 years. The French were not able to break him down. They fought for 18 solid years after the son took over from the mother who was captured. He fought for 18 years and then he was also captured and taken all the way to Gabon. By 1878, the kingdom known as the Walu Kingdom ceased to exist. Today, we remember this great black woman, Queen Ndate Mbuch. Today we remember this great black woman, Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj, one of the greatest queens who ever existed on the continent of Africa. One of the most powerful, in fact, the last most powerful queen of the Senegambia, the Walu Empire. She kept the French at bay. She kept the Moors at bay. She kept the people happy. But people did not want her to be happy. They attacked her. All because of the beautiful things she had in her land. She had gold. She had almost everything that a man would want. She encouraged technology. She encouraged education. But the French got to hear of her in 1841. When she was widowed, when her husband died, King Brack, she took over. Her sister, 
was the one who was on the throne briefly before she came on. And when she came on, she demonstrated a lot of power. But the French would not let her rest. They came over to her, fought her. First, they pretended to be traders so that they'll be able to decode the secret behind the great kingdom. Now, the Walu kingdom was blessed. And when everything pointed to the direction of war, she stood her grounds and fought for several years after defeating the Moors. The French now came in with sophisticated weapons, captured her and took her all the way to Gabon. That was by 1860, where she evaporated or died. Her son, Sidia, took over. When Sidia took over, he fought the French for yet another 18 years until he himself was captured as king of the Walu Empire of Senegambia. When he was captured, it brought an end to the Walu kingdom. Today we remember this great black woman. This woman who stood firm and was never a feeble queen. This woman who fought the French and the Moors tooth and nail. The smoking queen this powerful queen who protected her people night and day whose own son was pushed into the army to defend the land today we remember you mommy let me refer to you you know it's been the African history class. And in the bedding of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know what we do do, be an any or lay a mini or bafe, yen zunda kagane me zaka yini, ye and papango, bokaya nun, fifi aye nya, lukai na wo, banayen, ebe den. Missy Banaen, a bay abade, Lele and Jiman singer Bekune, Lele and Jiman singer Berry. Now that you know the story of Queen Ndate Yala Mbuj, the last greatest queen of the Walu Empire of Senegambia, how will that impact your own life? She died at the age of 50, she evaporated at the age of 50. But she left her son behind to fight for the Walu Empire. And he fought the French for 18 solid years until 1878 when he himself was captured and the kingdom destroyed. To, to, uh.